we were not really good in, in keeping time, uh, but anyhow, I hope it was interesting for you, uh, and soon we will have lunch, but before that, there is a really important part of the program, Ljubljana Talks. And that's why I would like to invite on stage, first of all, Jan Orsic, my colleague, with whom we are doing this Ljubljana Talks. He's from Ljubljana Convention Bureau. We will explain shortly what is Ljubljana Talks about and what are the rules of Ljubljana Talks. But before we start with Ljubljana Talks, I just, I just want to mention something. We prepare a draft of Ljubljana Manifesto. It sounds really, really important. And we will give you some papers around, but do not read this now because otherwise you will not follow us with Jan. Uh, in Ljubljana Manifesto, we would like to find out what are really smart, agile, and responsible events of the future. So we do not want to focus on, on destinations or on anything else, but on events itself. So according to the research we, we did, I mentioned this early in the morning, we put together some, some points, several points, but now it's your time to put your ideas, your whatever you think it's good for the events for the future. And after this event, we will, we will try to put together a kind of Ljubljana Manifesto to guideline yeah, us a little bit. Because what we heard this morning, it's in my opinion really important. And we, we can really uh, implement this in our daily lives. Jan, what can you say about Ljubljana Talks? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Gorast. Uh, hi, everyone and everyone online. I just want to say that those of you who are with us digitally, you perhaps don't know that we are in this magnificent setting here in Ljubljana of the Swiss house, or Schwitzeria as we call it, uh, that is now a artist residence uh, building. Uh, it was built in uh, the middle of the 19th century. Uh, 1835 to be precise, and it is a really beautiful building in Tivoli Park overlooking Ljubljana. Uh, it was a hotel for a part of the history, but always connected with art and also connected with creativity, so it's a great location to be in. And I just want to talk about Ljubljana Talks very briefly. Uh, at Ljubljana Tourism, we have been thinking about, you know, staying innovative and getting in touch with our clients despite the travel bans and lockdowns and all the stuff that was happening. So with Gorazd, we were brainstorming one day and we figured out that, you know, it, it, just because we uh, have to be at home or we cannot travel, it doesn't mean we cannot talk to anyone on the globe. And um, we actually figured out that that was about the time where Clubhouse was still locked only for the iPhones and so on. And we said, let's do an experiment. And uh, we set up this idea of Ljubljana Talks, which is basically that at least once a month we make a recording for, uh, for the online platform of Clubhouse. Um, sometimes there's many people, sometimes there's less people, but that's the concept of Clubhouse. But we also make recordings, we put them on YouTube, and you can also uh, see them now and go back. And we had some really good... Uh, audiences. Now, uh, before our today's guests come up here, I just want to say the idea is that we keep, keep it short, keep it simple, keep it fun. There's no topics that are not allowed. There's no, uh, no limits to who can say something. If anyone has a question, you know, also from the audience, just, you know, interrupt us. Um, and uh, basically, we want to have a good, fun chat uh, in a maximum of 30 minutes, possibly even less today, because I can uh, see that some people are already eager to go for lunch. So, uh, Gorast. Thanks, Jan. We have three great guests. I call, call them legends again, you know. First of all, Henrik von Arnold. I will just mention uh, his uh, uh, previous position in, in line with Convention Bureau activities. He was a long time ago a director of Stockholm Convention Bureau, but now he's member of United's team. Ivo, uh, uh, Henrik, the stage is yours. Then we have Miloš Milovanovic. He was once before, a long time ago, he was director of Serbia Convention Bureau. Just to let you know uh, what did these guys have in common. And now he's a member of Gaining Age team. Miloš, the stage is yours. And then we have Miha Kovacic. Uh, he's still director of Slovenian Convention Bureau, but from what, Wednesday on, next week, he will come to the other uh, part of the river. So, Micha, come closer. And uh, yeah, yeah, 
done. Maybe just these, these fast questions for all of you. Yeah. You answer just in, in three words. Yeah, live just... or online events, Henry. Three words, live, online. For me, it's still live. Thanks, Milos. Uh, live events because when uh, audience prefer thanks. To, to hug, Mi no, thanks, no, 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 to thanks, hug thanks, children uh, digitally three rather words. than physically, that would be digital. <laughs> this is Clubhouse, you see? Just three words. Micha? Live, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, you're right. You're right, there guys. There you go. There you go. Here, Why here are we, we doing this? Here we go. Also in a digital way. Exactly. Because we miss life. <laughs> because we can't uh, uh, hug live, then we try to pretend that hug digitally is good enough. Exactly. 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 This is, this is Alps or Adriatic, Henrik? This is a local question. Alps or Adriatic Sea? Alps. Okay, Mika? I will just as answer to the before one. No, you cannot. You Our cannot. industry will not solve the world. We are part of the life community. Uh, uh, Alps, of course. I come Thanks. from there. Milos? Adriatic. Thanks. And then car or train, Henrik? Car or train. Car or train? Car. Car. Mika? I love train, but I drive car. <laughs> okay. Car, car is more freedom. And then ACBC, my last question, and then Jan will take over. ACBC, what was better? AC or PC or? Stupid question. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Micha? <laughs> I'm an adventurous guy, so from BC as of Wednesday next week. Okay, Milos? <laughs> Both with ACDC. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay. Audience, AC or BC? After COVID, After. Okay. 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 So, so now we, we are getting serious now. now. Okay. We are getting very serious. Um, in five sentences, where do you see the meetings industry in five years? Um, I, I see somewhere in between AC and BC, something which we believe that is BC. This is how we want to adapt to future. Uh, but the, the issue is, do we want to adapt to restrictions or we are looking for freedom? It's about us, it's not about AC and BC. Okay, cool. Good, good. Our industry is not that healthy financially that can afford those what we have seen uh, also from other industries. That's why our industry will not evolve that at that speed, but it will, so it will change. And unfortunately, so the future is hybrid and digital and less life, but uh, we are the part of the solution of the life, not the whole spectrum, I believe. Um, some of them will focus on life, some of them will focus on hybrid or digital, and I think there is enough space for, not for all of them, because we lost 30% of, of the staff. A lot of them will never come back, so the markets will change as well. I think whatever we do, we have to stop selling and providing solutions instead. In no matter if we do it by, by live meetings or different channels or tools or whatever, we have to change our mindset, what we are approaching our clients with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Guys, what is your perfect definition of excellent manager or director of Convention Bureau? What is your definition, Henry? Finding the right people, um, giving them freedom, giving them trust. Very good question. Uh, I think first you have to be faced face of the destination and have excellent relationship with the with the stakeholders, and of course clients. Uh, it's strong intellectual engagement and even stronger emotional engagement about convention bureaus. Yeah, I think we agree on that. Hopefully. Now, Gorast has witnessed the change of media from the print media to digital media. Where do you see the future of convention bureaus? Uh, we, we are always fascinated by technology. We are fascinated, our kids, we are fascinated because our kids grew up with mo mobile phones. 
we have been fascinated with the internet, our father with TV, his grandfather with car, his grandfather with electricity. So actually, you know, it's, not, it's nothing new. <laughs> we, are always, we are always fascinating, and we always believe it's going faster, faster, and faster. <laughs> so actually, uh, when we are very fascinating with the, with the technology, it means that we are getting older. Actually, that, that's, and we, we believe that our kids are very specific, and our, our parents, they told that we are very specific, and you know, that's like that. So actually, uh, I believe that uh, uh, future meetings will follow technology, you know, but mostly will follow uh, people needs. We don't go to meetings for technology. We go meetings for some specific, as I told you, for some specific combination of intellectual and emotional engagement. That's why we go to meetings. That's why we love them. Not but for do technology. You see, do you see convention bureaus still playing this game or it will be taken over by something digital, digital platform and you... Advanced convention bureaus will recognize that, others will follow and not so advanced, they will lag behind, as always. Convention bureau in five years, I think uh, we will never see so many convention bureaus on the market as we saw 2019. IMX and EIBTM will struggle with that and the, the global world. Uh, so, there is not a clear picture how the Convention Bureau will be in five years, but it will be definitely very different. I'm happy that after 16 years I don't carry that burden anymore, uh, but, uh, but it's an opportunity, again, as Ian said, a fantastic opportunity for the, for, the, for the Bureau, national or a city or a region, to think what the market really wants. And what I said, what I saw today, there was a lot of words, brand, 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 brand. I sell Slovenia, uh, promote Slovenia. There was not one hotel, not one destination, one DMC thinking that they are a brand, that they are selling brand, because they're also selling, as you said, <laughs> services. So I think this will be a great awakening point for the bureaus to think through, because a lot of the bureaus are paid by taxes by public sector, not by private sector. Our bureau is actually the only one in Europe that is a private convention bureau and it's, it's really tough. So, and we see there are bureaus also public closing, they're decreasing budget. So I think it's great opportunity now that we create the, the best convention bureau of the future. And there is, one last sentence, there is an alliance of national convention bureaus, 26 or seven in Europe, European, initiative and actually these guys are meeting today, 27, in Zurich, talking about the Convention Bureau of the Future. Unfortunately, I'm here, I'm not there. So, hi guys. <laughs> Eric? Fu predicting future is like predicting, I don't know. Uh, I guess, however, that the, the traditional Convention Bureau has to change in mindset. We have to be, as I said before, providing solutions, be much more a, a tool for the destination development, not a tool for bringing in meetings or business events or events to a city. It has to have much more links to research, politicians, um, corporate life, etc., etc., in the destination and show off that we are really linking in to the development of the city. Now, a little bit more personal question. Since you, you were all uh, member, uh, you were you are all involved in this convention bureau uh, activities. What is the legacy uh, behind your acti uh, your work at, at Stockholm Convention Bureau, Slovenia Convention Bureau, and Serbia Convention Bureau? This is a little bit more personal, but what can you say about it? I actually think it's the uh, still being able to sit here, even though I haven't been in a convention bureau for six, seven years, and talking and listening to people, and people are hopefully trusting what I'm saying. I think that's the best legacy maybe I can have. I need the question next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it will, the time will show, but I feel a great honor if I look back uh, that, uh, that the global world 
accepted me and enabled me to promote a country. On the other side, imagine uh, 25, 30 years ago, I was writing thesis at the university in Germany, and my title was Slovenia for Tourism, because I come from tourism. I'm fourth generation uh, in tourism. Everybody worked in different sector, and there was no mice product. 25, it didn't exist. So, uh, and then <laughs> 16 years later, it's one of the prime projects, uh, one of the prime tourism, one of the three prime products of Slovenian tourism. So, on that, I'm really proud that the politicians put it in in a. But on the other side, uh, uh, we developed such really great products, destinations, hotels. But there is a lot of way to go. But another, uh, as Ian said again, fantastic opportunity for everybody. I, I left beer a long time ago, <laughs> so that, that was seven years ago. But actually, when I started in 2007, um, that was quite difficult. So I would say that the greatest contribution is to put um, Belgrade and Serbia on a map of meeting industry back again. The second stuff, to me, very important is the generation change. So bringing up the completely new generation of people uh, more agile, educated, uh, smiley in our industry. The third stuff is that by a huge growth of meeting industry from 2008 to 2014 we had, that was strong infrastructural growth with three times more rooms and now it is ended up with the final reconstruction of major convention center in Serbia and in the region. So actually the strongest companies are, uh, uh, they have interest in meeting industry now. Earlier, that was like a marginal business uh, in, in our economic structure. Now it is one of main businesses. And, uh, and uh, change of paradigm that we are not looking for meetings, but we are looking for, uh, for future business and human environment because the Future cities, the cities of future are cities we, where the most talented people will live and work. And, and meetings and meeting use is just a tool for cities to be like that. Will be that smart cities or seen cities or whatever cities, that's something which is our discussion and we can talk about all this stuff. Uh, but actually, uh, the city of future, the destination of the future, is the future where the most talented, the most agile, the most internationally integrated people will live and work. And all of us are in a huge competition for, for that. And our business is just a tool, but great tool for that. And that's a privilege to spend life by uh, managing this tool. It's a very good point, I think, yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> You're getting an applause. The future, the future of cities is related to what we do. Um, and when talking about this, I want to ask the audience now a question, which you can answer just by raising hands. Do you ever think about your ecological impact when buying a flight, a ticket for an airplane or something like that? Be yeah, honest. anyone? Be honest. Feels that? Okay. Anyone? Okay, we have a few very clear hands. We have. There you go. I can. I can raise my hand. And this is something that I think we also have to consider as an industry. I mean, we've always been. Um, you know, you guys come from convention bureaus. I come from convention bureau. You know, Goras, you are like a, a part of us. Uh, you know, through the media concept, Conventa, Conventa crossover, and all of these activities. But are we taking into account how perhaps you know, th this new mentality is coming up? And I think today a great point was made. You know, we are going from experience to transformation. That's what people will be looking for. How do you see the transformation coming into uh, effect in doing the destination promotion and everything? Uh, the role of Convention Bureau is to help support and even to lead the uh, transformation of the society and transformation of the economy. Uh, and over the last 15 years, from time to time, some stuff are, have been fancy, 
you know, uh, so now it's hybrid or digital that was also green and sustainable and all that stuff. So these are all like a new trends, but actually our job is to transform our society and to, to help transforming our economy in order to be the city of future uh, in, in, in a previous point. So actually that's the role of Convention Bureau and then if we are right Convention Bureau, that's not just us, but that's all of us. Yeah. And if we are smart enough and engaged enough and emotional enough uh, not to be just us, but all of us, then we are good at Bureau. We have one question from the audience, Micha, before you start. Angeles, okay. I love what you just said, and, and I would love that we see that across the world. Um, it's not my feeling in many different convention bureaus, especially in Europe, uh, where they, the majority, they work to feed the tourism industry, to fill hotels, to fill restaurants, and to fill cities with whatever kind of tourism, uh, without thinking about the legacy, the impact, and what that is bringing for the society of the destination. That's my feeling. I'm too negative, or what do you think about that? Uh, about the awareness of bureaus, not possible everybody to be a leader. So some of them will recognize, some of them will follow, as told, <laughs> some of them will lag behind. That's as usual. Uh, but actually, uh, I would say, uh, when I compare uh, uh, how it works now and how it used to be like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, that was like, uh, 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 10, 15 years ago, that was about 100% about filling hotel rooms. And that was also connected with the model of Convention Bureau, especially came from US by uh, financed by tax, uh, bad taxes. So, you know, you work for someone who pay, pay your salary. Uh, now, uh, uh, something which I'm very proud of in Gaining Edge, I have developed a research and analysis department and we developed the intellectual capital report, global report on intellectual capital. More and more destinations around the world, they are looking for that, which means that slowly, slowly, but more and more of them have realized that we are in business of intellectual engagement, economic development and transformation of our destinations in city of future, rather than just tourism business and filling hotels. It's process, yeah. it will take a time, but uh, not just leading destinations now are asking for that. There are a number of second tier cities, there are a number of cities that are not from Europe. We from Europe, e even us who are not from European Union, we used to believe that we are kind of dominant civilization in the world. But it, maybe it was, <laughs> I don't know. But for sure, working, working on a global level. Now it's not like that, and possible will not be. So actually, how strong we will be in that global competition, uh, it's how fast we will understand that this is about our engagement and not just about feeling dominant. And let me make you a last question, maybe to Micha. Um, don't you think the Convention Bureau should not be placed under tourism? but better under, I don't know, economic evolution or innovation and transformation or whatever other kind of... Exactly. Uh, I tried to connect with the Ministry of Science and, Her uh, and Education and Health, and they look at me like, sorry, we don't have time for you. So I tried with three ministers, different politician parties, then I gave up yeah. because my children will not succeed. So I'm the person who tried to succeed, so but unfortunately. But that's happening more and more. There is a, 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 not a, it's not a trend, but it's happening more and more because people see more and more business events as a tool for development of destinations. And it's not a tool for filling the, the, the tourist part, the tourism infrastructure. And as Milo said, it's gonna take time, but it will probably happen. And, and the ones who are not fast enough, I don't think they have a, a good future. Maybe I add, uh, we, we developed our ambassador program, national ambassador program. It took us 10 years to convince the government to co-finance it. We started two years ago. Despite COVID, it boomed like this. So we 
caught up those last 10 years, okay, we could be much better ahead. So, as you say, uh, we are agile, we are quick, we, are, we can learn quickly. So, and we want to now to develop it further on the corporate sector and sports, uh, sports field, and it's again slowly. So, I think uh, it, it exactly goes what Miller says. So, um, I'm angry why everything goes slowly, but that's exactly the challenge. If the government would understand uh, that how important this uh, industry is for the whole community, doesn't matter which sector, we would have a much better position. So somebody will win one day. <laughs> and the only one who can change that is ourselves. It's not the, the wrongdoing of the politicians, it's us who's not having the good argument to do it. And we need to research into good arguments and finding the smart data we talked about today, not just the big data, the smart data that we can actually show the politicians and they might, they might see, okay, this is important. And I think I've been, I've been in, in high level positions, roles from associations in the industry and I think it's a big problem in this industry, and it was mentioned before for one of the speakers that says this is one of the industries that develop less transformation during this process, and it's because it's led by the supply chain instead of led, you know, by the intention of the human asking to participate in events. And that's a super big, big thing. So we are too busy trying to fill hotel rooms and trying to move people instead of bringing the value of what's an event. And that's a big thing. I think it's a big responsibility for us, you know, to show that. But privilege as well. Eh? And privilege as well. Oh, yeah. Guys, this is now a real uh, Clubhouse Ljubljana Talks <laughs> vibe. This is what we are doing at Clubhouse Ljubljana Talks. So basically, we are running out of time. But in the afternoon, uh, a great speakers will be with us again. And we will talk about tr trust too. One of the topic is how to get trust from the politicians uh, and uh, many others. Jan, the last rule or unrule rule is that you ask yourself whatever you want. You're free. free of, you're free. So, uh, any so questions? You can ask Mika, Milos, whatever you want. And vice Even versa, the audience. And then we will finish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's happening next? Yeah. Uh, that's the best question you could give me. When the Jens had the presentation, it came to my mind. I feel like a bird on a cliff, and I jump, just jump. So I'm flying and enjoying this moment. I need to land one day because I don't, I don't know how to, to fly. But I'm floating, and, in, and I will enjoy, I hope, as long as possible. I hope I will not count it in days, but in months. And hopefully not years. <laughs> you make Bravo. I don't have a question, really. Uh, okay. uh, I, I would have a question for both of you as well as for audience because I'm a little bit provoked that by, by this uh, story about balance between digital and, 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 and live, etc. So uh, let's think for all, all, all uh, uh, everybody can ask. Uh, firstly, we, we should ask ourselves how free we feel by adapting to restrictions that are imposed to all of us? And are we more ready to adapt to restrictions or we are more ready to look for more freedom? Um, I think we are all like ships as a human beings. We are ships, so there is, we like to be in a, in a group and we like to follow. We don't be alone. So, as you said, not everybody is a leader and everybody wants to fo follow a leader. So, it depends in which direction you look. Because uh, when we finish now, some go to the toilet, some go to the cigarettes, some go to the drinks, some go to the eat. So, we, we are all ships. So, if you want to feel and you need. And you need that, you need this uh, closeness, restrictions, you go in that direction. If you hate, you go the other direction. What direction do you go? Second one. Second 
second, <laughs> second one. Um, it's, it's a very good question. And if I can just add, we, we did the interesting analysis of, you know, um, the room's occupancy through the COVID and how it fell when everything was closed. And uh, you can see, and I think for now, if we are allowed to work under restrictions, that is better than not work, being able to work. I think that is the crucial thing about the industry because only through working we can become better and create More free. and eventually gain our freedom because you know th this is we have to survive until we get ah, come out on. of this. I said we have a freedom in Europe which is I mean, we can't even believe what kind of freedom we have. So if we have to stay home for five months, or work from home for five months, there's shit. I, I rather survive under some restrictions than die being free. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, I, I respect that as well as I respect some people who are rather to live one day as a free than to live for a long time without with imposed restrictions. Okay, I'm reading a book about it right now, yeah? But okay, up that's, up that's just Sinclair. respectful to everybody. Say, it's, a very, it's a very good thing, but I mean, we know it's not a, we are not living under the dictatorship for ages. We have to come over this and we're gonna live through this and I'm gonna, I'm, and if we use the time good enough, I think we're gonna be stronger than ever. Yeah. And we, be we rethinking, thinking, redoing thinking, yeah. life. Yeah, I agree. Sorry to be exact. <laughs> Any question? If not, uh, I'm a bad timekeeper. I repeat again, you have a possibility to choose the music background. Uh, <laughs> ACDC, <laughs> Highway to Hell, is it okay? Okay? Angé, come on. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, there is lunch served outside. Uh, we'll see each other again in uh, 45 minutes, but maybe we will give you some more, more time for a lunch, okay? Uh, thanks a lot. Follow us on social media. Ljubljana Talks will go on. We will be live again in September. We will announce the date soon. So thanks a lot. See you Thank soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.